Hello everyone and welcome to a Genshin Impact lore video. Today, I want to talk about the Goddess of Dust and one of my favorite characters, Guizhong. I have made a few videos about her in the past, but those were way before I upgraded my editing style. Plus, this year's Lantern Rite event gave us some new information about her, so I have a reason to make this video. So now, let's get right into it. Hagentis, better known by her friends and her people as Guizhong, was the goddess of dust. She ruled over the Guili assembly in what is now known as the Guili Plains, alongside Morax, with help from other gods and Adepti as well. She also ruled over her own personal realm in Luhua Pool, known as the Realm of Clouds. Throughout her life, Guizhong was a kind and gentle goddess, who sought to guide humanity. Seeing them as fragile beings who yearned for intelligence, she taught them well and gave them pieces of her knowledge. However, Guizhong learned much from humans as well, especially regarding their perseverance and desire to succeed. In addition to being kind and gentle, Guizhong was often quite bubbly and excited as well. She would often invite her friends to dine with her at the Guili Assembly, and would always find things to talk about with everyone. She was able to make everyone laugh and smile, and always made sure everyone had a great time. Of course, Guizhong was also quite inventive, and would spend her time in the realm of clouds, coming up with all sorts of new ideas and studying the technology of other nations. Before we dive further into that though, I think we should start from the beginning of Guizhong's life and make our way forward. At some point thousands of years ago, Guizhong was born. Currently, it is unknown exactly how old she is and if she is older than Rex Lapis or not. Anyways, after her birth, she established her civilization in an unknown place, though it was still most likely somewhere in the area of Liyue. Eventually, she would meet the god of Geo Morax amidst a field of glaze lilies, which were the favorite flower of Guizhong. In this meeting, Guizhong would gift Morax a device known as the Memory of Dust, she challenged him with it, saying that all of her wisdom was hidden inside the stone dumbbell. While there was no contract between them, Morax accepted the challenge, and the two started working together. To this day, Morax, now a Zhongli, still has the stone dumbbell, which you can see in one of his idol animations. As you can see, he has not been able to complete the challenge, as it has not been opened. Anyways, with the two gods now aligned, they would both bring their people to the north of Mount Tianhong, to a spot which Guizhong dubbed the Plains of Returning and Departing, or the Guili Plains. This name was derived from Guizhong's name, as well as the name that Morax used at the time. In the Guili Plains, they would establish the Guili Assembly. It was ruled jointly by Guizhong and Morax, but they also had the help of other gods such as Merchosius, and Adepti such as Cloud Retainer. In the assembly, agriculture and farming were quite popular, and many farming villages started popping up around the area. The Guili assembly was far bigger than you might think as well, as it is said to have stretched a thousand miles around. Its northern border was actually Stone Gate, and through in-game measurements, it would also border Jueyun Karst at the west, Mingyun Village at the east, and the entrance to what is now Liyue Harbor at the south. The assembly was then most likely the biggest civilization in Liyue, and also the most prosperous. This prosperity was not only from the agriculture and farming that I mentioned earlier, but also from the four commandments that Guizhong set in place for the assembly when it was founded. To unite in ambition is to be steadfast and immovable for all time. Wisdom is like water, it nourishes all those who receive it, and in it is a reflection of the truth. Fortify the bones, that movement be supple when the time comes. Virtue grows tall like a tree, though there be shade, it will flourish forever. These commandments would of course help the Guili assembly flourish, and allowed for peaceful and calm times to be had. Outside of ruling the Guili assembly, Guizhong had her own hobbies and interests as well. 
As I said earlier, Guizhong was also the ruler of the Realm of Clouds, her own personal domain in Luhua Pool. This domain is where she kept all her inventions and blueprints, as well as where she worked on her inventions. These inventions included her Obscuro Vulpis mechanism, better known as the Guizhong Ballista. After her death, this device would have some finishing touches put on it by Cloud Retainer in honor of Guizhong. This device is now stationed at Mount Tianhong, and autonomously protects Liyue Harbor against enemies. The Guizhong Ballista was also used in the fights against Osile and Baisht, which showed just how powerful the device can be. Another of Guizhong's inventions was the Cleansing Bell. It is a device capable of composing and producing its own melodies. After arguing with Streetwood Rambler about the meaning behind music though, it was confiscated by Morax and designated for ceremonial use, such as rites of parting. Despite their arguments, Guizhong and Streetwood Rambler, who today goes by Ping, were quite good friends. They would meet often in the mountains to discuss music, mechanics, and the wonders of the mortal world, among other things. After gathering with the Adepti, the two would find time to talk while walking among the flowers too. The gatherings I just mentioned were quite common too. As I said earlier, Guizhong would often invite her friends to her residence in the Guili Assembly to dine, chat, and enjoy life. They always had such great times then, and Guizhong was also always able to find something to talk about with everyone. Guizhong would also sometimes meet up with Morax and Cloud Retainer atop Mount Aosung, just outside Cloud Retainer's abode. Here they would have meals and discuss inventions. Guizhong and Cloud Retainer also disguised their debates on mechanics as social gatherings so that Morax would judge their inventions. Beyond inventions and gatherings, Guizhong also studied the technology of other nations, including Ruin Guards and Ruin Hunters from Kanria, which can be found in her Realm of Clouds. In the 3.4 Lantern Rite cutscene with Guizhong, we can also see floating yellow crystals in the Realm of Clouds that seem very similar to those that power the Ruin Golems in Sumeru. There are actually a few cool details here, such as a small Guizhong Ballista, a small windmill, and alternate versions of the invention Cloud Retainer presented earlier in the cutscene. There is also what appears to be the Memory of Dust, or at least another version of it, or a prototype. In the end though, the good times of the Guili Assembly were fated not to last. Over 3,700 years ago, war between the gods broke out for the Seven Divine Seats, in what we know as the Archon War. Guizhong was not a strong god, and couldn't fight much on her own, which is why she relied on Morax and the others for their strength. In one battle in the Guili Plains, Guizhong was overwhelmed by the enemies she was facing, and was killed. Amidst the glacialies once more, she said goodbye to Morax, asking him to forget about the stone dimple she gave him. As for her reasons as to why, she unfortunately passed away before she could say. Guizhong's form then turned to the finest dust, before her lifeless corpse slowly withered away. The Yaksha were eventually able to subdue the enemy they were facing, but it was all too late. Cloud Retainer, Streetward Rambler, and other Adepti would soon make it to the scene, but weren't able to say goodbye to Guizhong. Shortly after her death, the Guili assembly that Guizhong had worked so hard on was destroyed in a massive flood. With the help of Morax, the Adepti, and food prepared by the stove god Marchosius, the people of the Guili assembly went on a 10-day journey to the south of Mount Tianhong, and founded what is today known as Liyue Harbor. The glazed lilies that Guizhong loved would also slowly disappear after her death. The constant warring and strife was like poison to them, causing them all to wither. Some still remain though, but are mostly in gardens in Liyue Harbor and Qingzi Village. However, one still grows on a cliff watching over the harbor, almost like Guizhong herself is watching over her people to this day. While Guizhong unfortunately passed away 3,700 years ago, her legacy still lives on in the people of Liyue Harbor and the Adepti. 
Streetwood Rambler would decide to live amongst mortals in Liwa Harbor as Madame Ping, and would come to understand why Guizhong admired humans as much as she did. As for Cloud Retainer, it was a lot harder for her to move on. She kept avoiding the Guili Plains for thousands of years in order to avoid her emotions as well. Eventually though, with the help of the Traveler, Ganyu, and Madame Ping, she has started to understand Guizhong's love for humanity as well, and also has started to learn how to deal with her grief. As for Morax, now Zhongli, he hasn't talked much about her, but he does have some knowledge about her inventions, being able to repair the broken Guizhong Ballista on Mount Tianhong. It makes me wonder if we'll ever hear him talk about her more, as I would love to hear what he has to say. Speaking of Morax, he wielded a weapon known as the Primordial Jade Cutter during the Archon War. However, it is hinted that this weapon was actually intended as a gift for Guizhong before her untimely passing. This further hints that Guizhong may have wielded swords when she was alive. Adding on to this, there are many connections between Guizhong and the sword-wielding maiden talked about in Records of the Gallant, Dust. This book talks about the Guili Plains, Glazelis, Adepti, and even has dust in the title, which is of course what Guizhong had dominion over. The maiden was said to be wearing a long indigo robe, and Guizhong had some indigo in her robes. It is also said that after the maiden was seen for the last time, there was a pile of bloody dust that was discovered. There are discrepancies between the book and what really happened to Guizhong, so the maiden might not be her. While it was really cool that we got some new information about Guizhong in the latest Lantern Rite, there is still so much we don't know about her. I could go on for so long with my thoughts and theories about her, but I'll save that for another time. I've seen a few interesting theories as of late too, with a lot of people wondering if Guizhong is now Sandrone, the seventh of the Fatui Harbingers. As for my thoughts, again, I'm going to save those for a future video. I'll probably wait until after Chowing Village and Chenyu Vale are released, as I'm hoping those areas will give us some more information on Guizhong in some way, or at least the Adepti in general. And as for Sandrone, hopefully we'll meet her soon, such as in Fontaine, so that we can either prove or disprove that theory. Like I said earlier though, Guizhong is one of my favorite characters in Genshin, and I can't wait for more information about her. I'd love to hear your thoughts about her and her past in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.